Phases of Development Feeding for Optimal Growth and Development From the very beginning, your relationship with your child is centered around food. From the moment you started breastfeeding, even formula feeding, this was always the time that you most spent with your child. Other than changing diapers and putting them to sleep, most of the waking hours that were spent with you was near or around food. Children not only depend on parents to provide the food, but they learn everything about life by the way they're fed. Their social, cognitive, and emotional development all depends on this relationship. It is important to understand the phases of development children go through to understand how to care and feed them at each stage. Although this course is not developed exclusively for infants, but mostly for children six months or older, I still want to cover in brief how to feed an infant in this section so that this course can be used for your future children or for other individuals who are expecting a new baby. So the first stage of development is homeostasis. This is when your newborn is able to remain calm and stable in spite of outside stimulation. In the very beginning, it takes time for you to understand your newborn and it takes time for them to adjust to you and the new environment. Achieving homeostasis takes time. So a baby who has reached homeostasis is calm and easy to be around. He or she does not get upset and even when they do get upset, they're relatively easy to understand and make calm. They sleep well and they don't sleep too much and they're able to periodically wake themselves up and they ask to be fed and stay up long enough to feed themselves. And this takes time. Soon as the baby matures, he or she will have more frequent calm moments, which is where the next phase comes in. Usually one phase has to be met before the other phase can take precedent. The next phase of development is attachment. That's the falling in love stage. That's when the child begins to fall in love with you and automatically you begin to fall in love with them. And this is around two months of age or so. As long as your baby has reached that homeostasis and calmness level, they can start feeling the attachment and the love. Your baby starts to smile and reach out to you and engage with you. And they learn a lot about themselves and the world around them. They learn to trust themselves, but they also learn to trust you. And they learn whether they can trust and depend on this world. Psychologists say that how a child felt in the first two years of their life sets the stage of how they feel about the world and relationships far into their future. If a child cannot depend on their parents to take care of their needs, they learn not to trust people and not open themselves up to others and usually have a hard time creating deep bonds. It usually manifests when they grow up and get married or become part of a committed relationship. At both the homeostasis and attachment phases of an infant, feeding should always be on demand. Make sure the child is ready and willing to eat. As soon as they are born, it is the baby's decision on when, where, how much, and how fast they should be fed. Just like when they were in your wombs, their body asks for it, and it is your job to honor this. You don't have to be a perfect parent, but you need to be flexible and sensitive enough to your child to understand what they're asking for. And you have to try to do a well enough job during the first six months to allow your child to achieve homeostasis and attachment. These are critical stages. You need to pay attention to the cues and adjust accordingly. Your baby's ability to feel calm impacts their feeding and so does their sleep. Most newborns have trouble staying up to complete their feeding. To do a good job with feeding, it is important for you to understand their sleep cycles. Most babies cycle from quiet to active sleep and sometimes back again. You want your child to be fully awake and calm when you offer to feed them. Do not put a nipple in the mouth of a crying baby to pacify them. And do not feed your child when they are sleeping. And do not feed your child to sleep. This is a bonding time for you, so make sure they are awake and alert and are aware of when feeding is happening. 
So take a look at this video to understand the sleep cycles of an infant. At first, Ashley settles down and seems to be sleeping soundly. Her eyes are still, her breathing is regular, and her arms are relaxed. She's in quiet sleep. It isn't long before Ashley moves into active sleep. She gets restless. She seems to be waking up, her eyes open. She makes little sounds and she moves around. An inexperienced parent might think that she's waking up and pick her up. But Sadith wisely leaves Ashley alone and Ashley goes back into quiet sleep. To help your baby do a good job with eating, you need to understand sleep states so you can sort out what is happening. During sleep, a baby goes back and forth two or three times between quiet sleep and active sleep. Then she goes into a drowsy and waking up state. That's when to pick her up, comfort her, and help her wake up the rest of the way so she can eat well. In the beginning, it's only by trial and error that you will be able to tell when your child is done with sleeping and is finally alert. If you're not sure, leave the baby alone. She or he may go back to sleep or wake themselves up. The more you're able to tell, the better feeding will go. The child needs to be fully awake before he or she is fed. Do not attempt to feed them right when they wake up. Like ourselves in the morning, we can get right out of bed and eat breakfast. We need to get fresh first. And that's the same for your baby. Pick them up, play with them, talk with them a little, open the lights up. Soon your baby will realize that they're hungry and will announce it to you in several different ways. They may look at your face or move their arms, head or leg or even their whole body towards you. The movements are going to be smooth their eyes will be wide open and bright, and their face will look bright. Once you've mastered the sleep cycles, be aware not to overstimulate your child. Always keep a calm presence because your child is coming from a very dark and quiet place. Waking up completely requires your child to slowly be alert. Remember, if you interrupt their sleep to feed, or if they haven't completed their nap, they won't eat well. Or if they're too hungry, they won't sleep well and not complete their sleep cycles and look dull and agitated and cry. Crying is a very late hunger sign and is completely unnecessary. As the child grows, this sleep gets longer and more defined. Most babies know the difference between day and night and sleep longer throughout the night. Keep the night feedings dimly lighted, calm and uneventful and as brief as possible. Every child has their own temperament. Some are more irritable than others, and some are very organized and patient. How you interact with them will affect their temperament. For example, a negative and fidgety child can learn to have more moderate responses when you feed them depending on their cues, and especially stop feeding them when he or she says that they want to stop. Feeding for infants should be on demand. Even from the time they're exclusively milk fed, they may refuse to be fed if they're sleepy or if they have had enough. They usually give a sign by refusing, but when you force them, they will retaliate by arching their back. That's a second level sign that feeding is over. It doesn't have to come to that. The easygoing child will just try to please their parents to keep little conflict and follow the parents' instruction. Don't make the situation worse so they start crying. Understand the early signs. If you refuse to follow the cues over time, feeding will get tougher and tougher and even your easygoing child will start to show signs of retaliation and resentment. The best way to feed an infant is lightly brush their lips with the nipple and wait for them to open up before you put the nipple in their mouth. Allow them to feed as much as they want. This allows them to get an early experience with getting themselves hurt. Make sure feeding is smooth and steady. Sit still while feeding and be comfortable and don't try to rush it. Children know when you're not comfortable and they will not be comfortable in eating. Let them eat their way, whether it's too much or too little, fast or slow, start and stop, read the signals. When they slow down, wait for a while, maybe they're taking a break. Don't assume feeding time is over. Offer again in a few minutes by gently brushing the nipple close to the lips. If they open up to feed, 
then feed them. When they stop suckling and refuse to take any more or show you a sign that feeding is over, they will relax, slow down and stop nursing. Talk and play for a while after feeding. Don't feed them to sleep. Put them down when they are calm and drowsy and let them put themselves to sleep. Repeat this pattern of respect and honor for your child with each age and stage. Trying to force or even rescue your child will exacerbate the negative tendencies. The next phase of development for children is separation and individuality. This is when your child realizes he or she is their own person and have their own choices. This is when they realize their independence during the toddler years, around 6 to 12 months. They have a need to communicate and be understood. They have a burning need to do everything their way. They have a lot of autonomy and you start to hear a lot of no's. And they now want to start feeding themselves. This is where many children start to present behaviors of picky eating. More of this will be covered in the next module. The most common questions I get is when to start solid foods. And my answer is usually that there is no fixed age. Although it's typically around six months, but it all depends on what your child can do and not by how old they are. In general, your child should be able to sit up alone or with support and be able to use the muscles in the neck to hold their head up straight. And they should be able to put fingers and toys in their mouth. He or she should be able to open their mouths up when they see food coming and close the lips over the spoon and be able to scrape the food off of the spoon by their lips. Don't worry about starting foods too early. This will take some time. Starting solids before your child is ready and capable can make them off-put by food. They do not look forward to your meal time and your bonding time. They will be far more interested in solid foods when they are more capable. When your child can sit up, you can check by offering them some iron fortified cereal or barley cereal in a spoonful. Keep the spoon about a foot away from your child and wait for a response. If he or she opens their mouth or even leans forward to let you know that they want it, then try feeding. Try this every couple of days until you see their skill with the spoon. Try to start with more thinner cereals first until their mouth and motor skills develop and then progress to thicker cereals and then start with lumps in the cereal before you move on to solid foods. This should progress slowly and over time and with your child's developmental skills. The way a child is fed also teaches them about their capability to influence others and their self-worth. If your child asks for something and people or you respond to them in a prompt and appropriate fashion, for example, when you put the spoon in their mouth and leave it in there long enough for them to remove the food from the spoon, you show them that you're willing to let them take the lead and you encourage them to talk in a sense with you. You are building an essential communication and relationship pattern which will play a powerful role in not just your future interactions but also to support your child's cognitive, emotional and social development. Your child also learns that they matter and that other people find them interesting. They think, in whatever cute way they may think, that I must be a pretty important person that people go through that extra length to give me what I want. It seems that I ask for something important and I know what I'm doing and what I'm asking is important. On the other hand, if your child has to make a fuss or fight or even struggle to get their needs met, or even if they do get it, but it has very little or nothing to do with what they actually asked for, then they're likely to think of themselves as not having much importance to other people or to the world, and that they're not worthy of being heard and that their needs don't really matter. 